the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome all who join us through the media as we celebrate Mass today on this Thursday of the fourth week of Easter. Almighty God, look upon your people, the people, Lord God, you have invited to your table today, O Lord. Look on us in your love, prepare us to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, you came to reconcile us with one another and with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than at its beginnings, look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness, and in those you have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth, may you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and his friends went by sea from Paphos to Perga in Pamphylia, where John left them to go back to Jerusalem. The others carried on from Perga till they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to synagogue on the Sabbath and they took their seats. After the lessons from the law and the prophets had been read, the presidents of the synagogue sent them a message. Brothers, if you would like to address some words of encouragement to the congregation, please do so. Paul stood up, held up a hand for silence, and began to speak. Men of Israel and fearers of God, listen. The God of our nation, Israel, chose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then, by divine power, he led them out and for about 40 years took care of them in the wilderness. When he had destroyed the seven nations in Canaan, he put them in possession of their land for about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges, down from the prophet Samuel. Then they demanded a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. After 40 years, he disposed him and made David their king, of whom he approved in these words. I have selected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will carry out my whole purpose. To keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus as a savior, whose coming was heralded by John when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be. That one is coming after me, and I am not fit 
to undo his sandal. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name, his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. witness, the firstborn from the dead. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After he had washed the feet of his disciples, Jesus said to them, I tell you most solemnly, no servant is greater than his master. No messenger is greater than the man who sent him. Now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. I'm not speaking about all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but what scripture says must be fulfilled. Someone who shares my table rebels against me. I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I send, welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. So we continue our first readings to read the history of the church, the early church. And this part of Acts of the Apostles, we're concentrating now on Paul and all the various journeys that Paul made and all the experiences that, that he had to, to face. And here we have him preaching. They went to the synagogue on the Sabbath and took their seats. And the reason, of course, they probably went to the Sabbath first in every town they went into was because there were Jews there who would have been prepared over the centuries for the coming of the Messiah. So we, we, heard, we hear, therefore, Paul in his speech giving, the, the, reminding them of their history. We will see, of course, a time will come when, when um, they will shake as it were the dust off their feet and move more and more to preaching to the Gentiles. But they began the preaching to the Jews in all the different places they went to, and they would go to the synagogue where, where people gathered to pray, and they would preach there. Sometimes it's success, sometimes the people wanted to kill them, as we'll hear as we continue reading. So after the liturgy of the word, after the readings from the scripture, they asked Paul and the others with him if they would like to say a few words. And that was par for the course. They would invite visitors. We remember when Jesus went in the synagogue at Nazareth, they gave him the, um, the school to read and, so, and, and to talk afterwards. So they asked Paul to, um, to speak. 
Paul stood up, held up a hand for silence, and began to speak. And what we heard Paul saying is what we call salvation history, how God has worked in the past with the people, all that God did, how things unfolded, how he led them um, out of Egypt, how he gave them kings and prophets and, and so on. And then, to keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus as Savior. What happened then, what, what Paul did, as I said, was recap the story of salvation, how God had worked until the coming of Jesus. And it's always good to remind ourselves that God continues to work. I know I've said this here before, but don't mind. To know that God has a plan that is unfolding. Now, of course, that plan of God, we, we don't know how long it will take to unfold. I'm quite sure the sins of human beings hold back the plan of it. But that plan to bring everything back into the perfect peace and harmony that God wants for God's people, for all people. When that will happen, we don't know. But, but to remember, you know, and sometimes we wonder what is taking God so long. Sometimes we forget that God, Jesus will come again. Sometimes we, whatever the case may be, we get caught up in all sorts of different things, wondering about, well, does God really know what's going on? But the same God who worked, as Paul outlined here, over possibly 2,000 or more years, you know, how God worked to bring about the birth of Jesus, God continues to work now until that time when Jesus will come again. And we are part of that plan in some way, in some way. Some people have major parts to play, I suppose, maybe Pope Francis, Other, others who may do things that will reach a lot of people. Others, you wonder sometimes about your, your insignificance. How can I be part of God's plan? I remember many, many years ago thinking, oh God, what's this all about? You know, and... Am I making any difference at all? And then, looking through the Bible, I can't, I can't remember the chapter and verse, um, somewhere probably 14, of Isaiah. And um, the, 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 the prophet is saying, I thought I had wearied myself for nothing. That was all pointless. But then, the Lord had spoken to him, and he recognized that God was at work in what he was doing. You feel that your life is insignificant. You feel your life is, what's the point of it? As far as God's plan is concerned, God is at work. The same God who worked in all these ways, God continues to work in the world today. And he looks at us to bring, continue bringing that message of God's presence, God, that, that message of God's relevance, that message of God's love. What we do is not in vain. Whatever we call to, whatever our work might be in the home, out of the home, school, whatever our work might be, right there, God is asking us to be the best we can, to love God, love neighbor, to do everything as if for the Lord, and to trust in the slow work of God. We come before the Lord now with our prayers of intercession. Almighty God, we pray for the church throughout the world. It's people, O Lord, whom you have called. We pray that the church, O Lord God, may shine once again with your love, O Lord. Be a sign of truth in the world. Lord, we pray that your people may overcome, Lord God, the time of scandals, O Lord. Your people may once again shine in the night like a bright star. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Almighty God, we pray for Archbishop Jason and all the bishops of the Caribbean, O oh Lord. We ask that you may bless them with all that they need. For Archbishop Jason, our on mission, O oh Lord, that you may grant him all that he needs, Lord, to be a carrier of your word. Lord, Hear us. Lord, hear us. Almighty God, for this country, come, O Lord, and heal our land. And Lord, as every day brings news of violence, Lord God, we pray that you may, in your goodness, Lord, come to our help. And Lord, that your goodness, your mercy may get to the root of that, the darkness, O Lord. 
heal our boot, O oh Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for those who celebrate birthdays and for whom we've been asked to pray. We thank you for the gift of their lives, Lord, and we ask that you may bless them with all that they need as they continue the journey of their lives. May they know you, the Good Shepherd, with them in this new year of their lives. Lord, hear us. Almighty God, we thank you that Jesus has come, that we might have life, and life everlasting, life to the full. We pray for those who have gone before us and for whom we have been asked to pray. We hold them before you, Lord. May they know your mercy. May they know the beauty of your face. May they know the joy of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, Almighty God, we thank you that you hear our prayer. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Take my hands and make them as your own And use them for your kingdom here on earth Consecrate them to your care Anoint them for your service where you may need your gospel to be so take my hands they speak now for my heart and by their actions they will show Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Your heart Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, Father, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your praise, of your glory, as they acclaim. <coughs> God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way. When supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jason, our Bishop, the entire people you've gained for your own. Remember, too, Lord, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Father, have mercy on us gathered before you. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We prepare now for the breaking of bread and the sharing of the body and blood of Jesus. So at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share now with those near us a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy to enter into my life, but only a saved word in my soul.
sister, brother, at this time, you too are invited to receive Jesus. He says to you, come to me, for I am the bread of life. Come to me, you who thirst, and I will satisfy. For whatever reason, you are unable to be present to receive Jesus in a sacramental way. This time is your opportunity to receive Christ spiritually, to be in communion, to be one with your Lord and Savior. So come to him, hear his invitation. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come to me, come to me spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O divine Savior, O Jesus, O blessed sacrament. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my My Savior lives Because He lives I can face tomorrow Because He lives All fair is gone Because I know Because he lives, how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still. certain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fair is gone because I know Because he lives, and life is worth the living just because he Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, 
the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now, good brothers and sisters, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Just a reminder that on Saturday right here, we have a little fundraiser of our Mother's Day, launching of our Mother's Day week. So our bookshop will be open. We have all sorts of goodies as well on sale. It's a soup Saturday, so we have soups on sale and pay out. So anybody interested in tickets or wanting to know more, check with us. Come and support us. Thank you. With a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, he led them and set them free. With a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, He died on Calvary. With a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, He leads us forth into His kingdom. The new Jerusalem, the promised land, and our eternal home. God is moving through the land. He is moving with his mighty hand. From Calvary to eternity.